What's going on everybody? So today we're gonna learn how to make furled leaders. So I used to make these like over 10 years ago and wanted to get back into it. So I spent the last couple of days trying to remember how I did it. Haven't found a single uh, video online about how to do this with just a drill uh, and not one of those fancy little uh, doodads that, that make furled leader, you know, like rope type stuff. So anyways, as you can see by all the random strings, um, I have <laughs> gone through over a dozen of these before I finally got the recipe right. So just wanted to go ahead and share it with you since I couldn't find anybody else who could tell me the secrets um, and hope this helps you out. All right, so first off, my jig is the same jig that you would use for a 80 inch um, leader. So it comes out total before you start twisting anything is 88 inches um, and we'll cut down to about 80. So that's where this is gonna end up. As far as where I put each of the pins, you can find that pretty much anywhere online. I'm not gonna tell you simply because you can break it up kind of however you want, depending how you want your taper spaced. I don't think it's hugely important that you get the exact inches correct, um, but as long as there's two different paths and it's alternating, uh, on either side. That's the more important thing. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie an overhand knot. Once I tie an overhand knot, I'm going to put it on my very first post. And then from there, I'm going to take it and wrap it. And the wraps will just depend on how, uh, <clears throat> how many like pound tests or whatever you want to go for your, for your line. So I'm going to make this a dry fly line. So I'm going to do with this, particular string, I'm just going to do three total wraps, or sorry, five, five wraps for the first one. So that's one, two, three, four. This right here is five. Now, this is what makes it tapered. The next thing I'm going to do is go to my next post. Come around, and then go in between the threads your previous loop. That's what locks them together and it should lock it to the post. Now this one, I'm going to do three wraps. Three. And I like to make sure that I'm doing it the same all the way around. So essentially I'm making sure that I'm going outside in, outside in, and that every time I'm going under and over. It doesn't matter if you go inside or outside or however, just as long as it's consistent every single wrap. Now, when you get to the end, this is important. So once I get go around this post, this is my last post. I'm gonna go around this post on the outside, go to my next post and go around it, keeping the outside in pattern, but I'm gonna go around the outside again. I do not want to wrap around this post. It's extremely important that I don't wanna do that. So here, I'm going to come back to this one, lock that, that string in, and go back around the outside again. All right, now I'm going to continue this process. So once again, three wraps here. By the way, I only did two wraps at the very end. So Now, once I get down to the end here, I'm just going to do another overhand knot. So I'm going to take the excess, just trim my tags. Now that I have my string all hooked up, is what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the posts that I have at the very end, obviously, but I'm going to go ahead and remove these other posts. And I put this roofing nail down here at the end because I don't like how this sits and as it spins, it'll pull up. So the roofing nail with that big head on there keeps the string in place when I go to spin it with the drill. And at this moment, since nothing's been spun yet, you don't really have to keep a ton of tension on the string because it's not wound up yet. So I'm going to take off my last dowel and I'm going to pull this over top of that nail. Now is a good time for me to go ahead and put in that tippet ring. All right, now one of the things I put on every single one of my furrowed leaders because it's super difficult if you don't. And this is why I like making my own leaders because some of the other leader companies that you can buy furled leaders from, they don't put 
these little uh, tippet rings on the end. And these things will make you money when you're out actually fishing. So just so you know, when you go to purchase them, they have packs of five. These gigantic things are like, I think five millimeters on up. These are way too big. These are for like, if I'm gonna tie off and have multiple lines, you know, for cat fishing or something. For these tippet rings, the, the ones I have here I'm using are three millimeter. Okay, I would probably even go a little bit smaller to like a, a one or two, especially for dry flies. So um, anyways, just, just a, a, as a note, because I've tried looking up sizes recommended, nobody had them. So um, just so you know, one or two millimeters for dry flies, nothing really bigger. So I've used a pair of hemostats to lock it in, so that way I don't lose it, it's super easy to deal with, All right? And I'm just gonna slide one end off of the post, and I'm gonna slide the tippet ring through there. So now that I've got that, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on the post. Then I'm gonna take the little tippet ring right here. I'm just gonna slide it all the way down to the very end. Key piece, all right? Very important when you're gonna be only using just a drill and not a dual spinning little for a leader machine thingy, okay? Do that. So you need to know how far you want the string to compress in order to make sure it gets furled correctly, all right? I, one very important piece that I've learned, part of the reason I've had to do like so many test tries is to figure out exactly how many inches I want the string to reduce down. The jigs that you'll find online will say for an 80, uh, for an 80 inch leader, you want your last pin to be 88 inches and you cut in eight inches. So you take it from 88 down to eight, okay? And that's how far you wind it down. Now, that math did not work for me, all right? I kept having problems and it wasn't, it wasn't braided tight enough. So when I went to go do my shore bloop at the end, I was having a lot of problems and it would just come unfurled. So, is what I found is that I'm at 88 full length and I take it down, my notch is all the way down, my notch is all the way down here. This line that you see is 80 exactly. I take it another three inches down to 77. I don't know, okay, mathematically, it, like what difference that makes or whatever, but I can tell you I've tried this over a dozen times and that's the magic number for me. Maybe it's the string that I'm using is a little more or less stretchy or something, I don't know. But I think the key piece is that you have to make sure you're winding the string the appropriate amount of times to where you get a tight enough furl. But also you're not breaking it because that's the other issue I had a few times was I went too far and I snapped the line. So I would recommend if you're gonna do this is that you, you do a couple test tries to figure out exactly where that, that limit is so that it, when it goes to wind up on itself later at the end, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's very important. Now that everything's ready to go, I'm gonna take my drill with my hook. Simple enough, I crushed the barb all the way down so there's no barb on it. I'm just gonna take it, capture all the threads, take out my post, and start drilling. All right, once you get down to the end and you're at, you've, you've wound that string up all the way to the line, these tacks are perfect. So all I'm going to do is just unwind it. I'm just going to unwind the string a little bit and I'm going to take the head of that tack and stick it right between the loops. You just pull it off and I can stick the tack right to the board and now it's got one end nice and tight. Now, 
From here, I'm gonna go through and do the exact same thing to the other side. All right, so now I've got both strings to the same length. I'm gonna take the same, the same pin and use it on this one here. And now all I have to do is just slide the hook out. One of the more important things with this is to make sure now that we have this twisted up, I wanna keep this line as, as taut as possible. If each one of these little strings, there's two of them now, okay? The idea is each one of those is individually wound. Once I release the end and I allow them to spin, they're gonna spin on each other and they're gonna lock those threads in place. However, if I let a little bit of line out too soon without actually stretching it out and letting it evenly wrap up, each one of these two will wind up on itself before they wind up on each other. And that is where you have problems. So what I found is the key to this, since we've used one drill and done each line separately, is you keep tension on this end. That's why I like the, the thumbtack, keep tension on this end. And then we're gonna go down to that end. I'm gonna put some weights on it and then we're gonna hang it up. I've got my hook. I think it's like a number four hook. It doesn't really matter, right? But once again, took the barb off it just to make sure that I don't cut the line at any point. And then I've got uh, some weights on it. Doesn't matter the specific amount as long as it's enough to keep the line tight. So in this case, I've got four drop shots and they're just tied on there with a piece of monofilament. So now I'm gonna take the hook and I'm gonna capture that tippet eye ring and I'm gonna bring the eyelet to the very end of the line, carefully take it off of here. And I'm gonna hold the weights tight and just let it go. Now it's gonna spin on itself, okay? This next part is super key. Now this is what I found is one of the biggest hangups, no pun intended, is that my wingspan isn't long enough to stretch from one end to the other of this leader. So I keep it on my furling board. I keep the weight and the tension down at the bottom here. And all I do, while I have the weight down here, I keep tension on the weight and I just slowly lift my board up and then, I, and then that allows now the weights on the string to keep the slack. So I don't have to worry about it anymore. And I simply pick the board up and I lean it all the way over until the weights are free floating. When they've come to full rest, that's when I know that I can go ahead, now it's safe to take off the line, at least at the bottom end. I still want to keep the top end where I, since I have the uh, tippet ring in there, I can, I, I can go ahead and like release the tension on this and it's fine. Where I want to keep tension this entire time is up at the top where the pin is until I go ahead and put that shore bloop in there. In order to do the shore bloop, I can go ahead and take my tack off, but I want to leave the tack still with the end of the loop line focus around it, okay? I'm gonna release it just a little bit and I'm gonna take this little, what is this called? Some thread puller, right? You can, this one's kind of a big one, but you can get it at like Hobby Lobby or any knitting place. If you don't have one of these, you can always take a piece of fishing line, go through it, but this makes it a lot easier. So I'm gonna loosen this up a little bit until I get just enough of a thread tip where I can slide this in there. I realize you probably can't see me doing this, but let me see if I can make this a little better. I'm just simply going through the ends here. 
just like that. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can pull the other end. I'll go ahead and take this tack off. I'm just, all I'm doing is just pulling the thread through itself. All right, nothing too crazy or complicated. Just kind of pull it all the way to the end until you get to where you have, see how it's just gone through itself? Real simple, all right? You just want to pull it until you have just that little bit left. Now, for the shore loop, okay? If you like this, this help you out, please hit like and subscribe. Uh, I'm getting ready to transition into the fishing season, as you can see, so I'll have some fly tying uh, that I'll get into. I haven't done any serious fly fishing in about seven years. So uh, pretty much right before my, my injury uh, initially happened, and I never really did too much after that. And if I did, um, it was just going out with my kids and kind of piddling around for the day. So hope to get into some uh, more serious trips this year and uh, take you guys all with me. Thank you.